I thought I would create this video to show you a couple of different things. When I go out scouting, more often than not, I don't take the tripod or I'll leave it in the car when we're just out walking. And sometimes you get to a location and you think, is this going to be a square crop? Because I'm really favouring square crops and have been for quite a while now, so I may do a video on that. But, and I look at the, the location, I think this would actually do for a panel. Don't have a tripod, this is going to join together, but the software's that good, it joins it together. Sometimes it doesn't join it right. And that's when hopefully this video will come in and show you how to correct horizons. A lot of the time the software Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever software you use will stitch these images together. You just have to take the shot, that's it. You just have to take the shot and get it and that is it. The software does the rest. Every now and again, what happens is, especially when you have a straight horizon over the sea, you get the odd wee inflection, shall we say. Uh, and what happens is you need to get in and manually correct that. So what I'm going to do with the video is I'm going to show you one of the ways that I use, and it is only one of the ways that I use to correct these. Now it's not perfect, but if you're quite new to shooting handheld panels, this may help you. So let's dive right in. So this sequence here of 12 images is actually the handheld panorama and they were each shot at ISO 200, 24mm, f9 and 200th of a second. Now when I was shooting these I did notice that I raised my hand slightly. What I had been doing when I was shooting them was if I go here, I had my focus indicator just sitting roughly above the horizon but for one of the images it moved and I think it was that one but it actually moved and it was slightly higher. So this panorama should go wrong. So let's just go through the process. Select them all, right click, photo merge, panorama. And Lightroom will go through the process of doing this and it's relatively quick there because I've already ran through this. For myself, I'm just gonna push the boundary warp up. Normally I'll have auto settings off but I'll leave it on for the purpose of this video and we're going to go in and correct these areas here. There's a couple of areas that you will see. There's one, there's two. Just click merge. Okay, so that's us now in Photoshop. And what I could do is I can show you the areas that I need to correct, which is that area there, which will be one of the images. And then if you can see it, that area there. So what we've really got to do is we've got to match this part of the horizon with that part of the horizon without it looking out of sorts and still looking level. So there's a few ways that we can do this, but I'm gonna show you what I consider to be one of the simplest ways to do this. Now that I've zoomed in, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you two ways of copying and pasting. And I'm gonna choose the lasso tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna draw beyond where I need it to be because we'll add a mask to this later just to get the blend a wee bit better. And if I go Control and J, it copies it up. If I turn that bottom layer off, you'll see that that's copied. But what I'm going to do is step back a couple of times so that we have the selection without a copy. If you want something to paste in exactly as you have selected it, go to Edit Copy and then go to Edit Paste Special Paste in Place. So that's it now exactly where you want it. The reason I'm showing you that is sometimes if you're copying and pasting things uh, from images or within images, you're cutting them out and then pasting them on, what will happen is it might move it slightly. So that's how we do it. Next thing is with the rulers turned on, which is Control and R uh, on our PC or Command and R on a Mac. And if I just show you, Control and R, the rulers disappear, Command and R, they come back on. I am going to grab on the ruler using the left mouse button and I'm going to drag a guide over to where I need the connection to be clean and grab another one and put it there where I need the connection to be clean. We're going to extend it beyond that but I know that that's my boundary mark. I can't be less than that. So next thing I'm going to do is control and T. 
which is free transform. I'm not scaling this, I'm using free transform for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend one side holding down shift. So I'm taking that well beyond where it should be. So if I do that, knowing that it will match up slightly, and I grab the center point and put it around about there, that now acts as my pivot point. I'm then going to extend this one beyond and by quite a bit. And then I'm going to rotate it down slightly, just to about there. Now, if I wanted to make this really, really accurate, what I could do is I could grab a ruler from the top there and drop that in the horizon. And you'll see that the horizon's out slightly. That's simply because we're handheld. And I'll just go through that entire process again. Control T, which is free transform. I'm going to extend that beyond. I am also then extend this beyond. I'm holding down shift so that the rest of the pins hold the document. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the middle point and put it on that cross, just there. And then go over here and rotate down the way. And I'm rotating down until that there is roughly on that. So that gives us a better level of horizon. I'm then going to click OK. Two ways of doing this. I'm just going to do it with what I consider to be the simplest way at the moment for the video. Is create a mask. I'm going to hide the guides that I've just put in. And that's Control and H on a PC, Command and H on a Mac. And I'm going to take the brush. And because it's a reveal all mask, I'm going to go in for a hide all mask. And I'm going to keep the brush size down a bit. I'm increasing the brush size with the square brackets and the keyboard. And I'm just going to paint away. Just in here. And I'm not going too far, but I'm just going to paint in there a tiny bit. And you'll see we could probably get away with that. Now I know that there's a building hiding in there. As you can see, and if I do that, it should all reappear and you can see where it's wrong. So I'm going to step that back. And what I'm going to do is just that. Now it is out slightly there, but again we can correct it. If we're okay here, we can correct it by going through the same process. So I'm going to go Command and T. This time I'm happy with this side. So I'm going to rotate this side up. And I'll take it beyond where it should be. Just a bit there. And that one's okay. And click OK. So, you can see the slight dip there, so let's go in here, click there, I'm going to take it to the buildings, take it right down here, just so that I've got plenty to work with, and there you can see the dip in the horizon. Now it seems a long process for what we are doing, but believe me, once you notice that it's out, you won't see it any other way. Right, I'm going to zoom this out and deselect and you notice there's another one there. So this could continue and continue and continue. And what I'll do is I'll go on and correct some of these. But I can also work the opposite way. I could take it there to there. And it's actually just that area there that's dipping so I won't. I'll just click in here. And go in again with the cone stamp tool. Now this is only one of the ways that you can do it. There is plenty of other ways to do this. Okay, that's the horizon corrected. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to go in and clean up in the image. I'm going to remove the people here. And I am going to clean up some of this area here. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because the crop that I foresee at the very end is around that area and that area. Because for me, this bit here is not required and that to me is just a distraction. And that's the reason I'm going to clean up this because that sitting at the edge of the frame will just draw your eyes to it. And I want to keep everybody kind of in the frame. So the next time you see the image, the people will be gone and we'll be finishing off the edit in Lightroom. Instead of actually showing you the edit, I've just decided to show you the final image so that you can see it as a whole. 
and here it is now and that's all the images stitched together and the horizon corrected for that. I've also included some other images like this one was taken last week up in Glencoe and the undulations in the mountains meant that this one stitched together just lovely. Trees here, I think this was a six image stitch and because again because of the variations in the trees it stitched together and finally this one in a foggy morning, 12 or 14 images to stitch this one. Hopefully you enjoyed that process there and as I said it is quite a simplistic process but if you're new to it, it could aid you in correcting any of them. A lot of the times when you're shooting panels, there could be trees, mountains, rocks. Uh, the image you saw, I think that was a 12 stitch. There's other images where you maybe do a 3, 5 stitch. But most of the time the mistakes will happen across the sea or a level of land where you'll see it like that. So hopefully what I showed you there will allow you to correct it. There are other ways and there are many other ways to do it. I thought that one would just make a good starter and a starter's guide to correct in these in camera. Hopefully back in location next week because I don't really like sitting in the room. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.